Dream Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We'll be checking out Mythical Awakened Aries in two other modes in this video. But before that, I'm gonna talk about her gear that I've given her. If you guys have watched the Jewel Raid video, I'm sure you guys will already know how I roughly geared her with double lethal on the weapons because I want her to life steal more. And counter is a must because she is after all the counter unit for PvE teams. For her accessory, I've given her Willful Ring and the substat at this point doesn't matter too much. What you want is her survival. If you want to give her counter, substat, or if you want to give her HP, even also possible actually. Um, for jewels, it is quite varied. Uh, for here, I've given her PvE attack, uh, PvE defense, and status effect resist rate. In some cases, you will want to go with lifesteal for her to lifesteal even more and keep her HP high because I think. In certain long battles, she can be pretty frail, okay, so that's something you want to remember. And then you can also give her reflect resist or cooldown resist depending on what the enemy does. Okay, so all these do matter. And in fact, if you don't have enough counter and you would like even more counter on her, you can even give her the counter jewel here to boost that because if you don't have the fighter soul at grade 7, then you won't have the counter increase by 20%. So if you would like more counter, then you know the jewel is possible. And for fighter soul here, I've also given her block rate so that she takes less damage. And also crit rate because I want her to have the possibility to land crits and also lifesteal more. For her traits, I've given her blind resist because she is a counter unit after all. And this was specifically for uh, who we are facing later, which is Shadow of Ambition. Paralyzed Resist and Counter Rate Increase So again, it's very subjective to the enemy you're facing, the traits especially because not every enemy is going to have these particular CC on them, right? So these are things that you will want to prepare yourself against And then we also have an exclusive item, it's very very important for you to unlock all three levels because at level 44 she gives 100% accuracy and that's really where she is most niche so as I said, we're going to look at Shadow of Ambition. Okay, the first run was already done by my guildmate and cleared about 30 something percent of his health. So here we're going to try to see how far we can go. With Ares here, I've taken out Regin Lave. Okay, I was previously on Regin Lave. I know I haven't made the guild raid videos, so I was still experimenting with how we can do this. I feel that overall, for Ares to be on this team, it is actually a much better team than using Regin Leaf. I don't think Shadow of Ambition has very high block rate, so my hits were consistently landing with crits and lethal, so that's good. So take note that for her passive, she does decrease cooldown when she gets attacked by 5 seconds, and when she attacks, she also decreases a further 10 seconds, which means, you know, in the enemy's turn itself, you have the potential to be decreasing 30 seconds of cooldown each turn, each enemy turn. And she does increase your block rate as well as your lethal damage of allies, which is the same thing Fenrir can do. So you might be thinking why I'm using Fenrir here, because I'm already using Ares, right? And Ares and Fenrir, they both increase lethal rate by a certain percentage. But firstly, Fenrir does provide a much higher lethal rate increase of 50% instead of 40. And not only that, Fenrir also helps to satisfy the criteria for having three offensive enemies so that Dillo's pet cheer can be fully activated. Okay, so these are the benefits of having Fenrir. And not only that, you know, you know Fenrir also has block notification. He also is able to increase crit and lethal damage more than what Ares can do. So I feel that Overall, Fenrir is still a much better PvE support than Ares and Ares is here just for the cooldowns which you know sometimes is also very debatable because Mei has so many skills going on and there are times when you can actually apply other buffs you know, then use Mei's skills so by the time you apply the other buffs, Mei's skill will be ready and her awakened skill also resets so there's actually a lot of uh, skills you can use from me sometimes the cooldown doesn't actually feel needed because i was also having a okay time without Ares in reg uh, using regen lave in shadow of ambition right but definitely for a fact that with the cooldown 
it is a lot more efficient. You can squeeze in a lot more skills within a certain period of time. As you can see, I have three main skills ready and usually, you know, you don't really have that many skills and you don't really have to constantly use Yuri's bottom skill to land the cooldown for your entire team. Because Ares, she's able to tank the hits very well from Shadow of Ambition, who doesn't do too much damage in the early, early turns and then May can continuously hit back really really hard. Furthermore, Ares helps to protect your entire team so you don't have to you know, worry too much about your entire team being wrecked if you don't have very good gear. Although, you know, in this case, May won't be targeted by Storm, uh, Shadow of Ambition's basic attack or in fact any boss's basic attack if you use Ares. So her Berserker Ring effect will take longer to happen and you can only rely on the boss's counters and the boss's skills for May's HP to decrease. So your damage in a way is also delayed because usually you know if the boss can hit May directly then you're gonna have a much faster run in terms of uh, damage climbing. And over here I decided just to try Aeris's Awakened skill to see how much it does because she does hit 1000% damage on one enemy and she also decreases the damage we take for 6 turns. Again this is a double edged sword, right? So sometimes you want more damage to be done to you, uh, sometimes you want less damage so it really depends on the boss. Uh, but as you can see that Awakened skill didn't do too much damage even though I gave her lethal weapons. So, yeah. I mean, she's definitely a good hero in Shadow of Ambition, no doubt about that, okay? If you were to let me choose between her and Regenlave, I will go for Ares because this actually lets us land hits more consistently. There is definitely no issue with landing your skills anymore. Previously, even though you had you know, block reduction and Regenlave, you could heal, um, but May still had issues landing because he does have 70% evasion rate but over here with 100% accuracy rate there is really no issue at all and in fact uh, on maybe certain weeks of heavenly stairs if they have very high evasion rate you can also use Ares if you like to reduce the cooldown uh, for your heroes DPS and also to allow you to land the hits more efficiently with less RNG involved. Her effect attack does let her life steal, and in this case against uh, Shadow of Ambition, she can life steal a pretty significant amount considering how low her HP is with counter armor. Okay, so I feel that it's still pretty decent in this context. But later on, we'll check out another PvE mode and uh, we will talk about the differences with how she performs. As you can see, my main skills are just chaining and chaining and chaining and in fact, I can also be able to cast uh, Fenris top skill a lot more as well because of the cooldown increase. So that means my crit and lethal damage is also more consistent and in, you know, I think Yuri is not an issue right now because I think uh, Yuri only needs to cast her bottom skill like once every 12 turns or so. Yeah, so the main thing is helping Fenrir to get his top skill ready in time with May's Awakened skill and then from there you can really do a good amount of damage. So over here, I was a little ambitious. Not that I could heal, but you know, um, my May is extremely low on health. <laughs> But I have a very positive feeling that, you know, if I had better armor, because my mate is actually using two regular revolutionary armor, but the reason why I had that on her is because she has the blessing set on those armors. So I am very positive that if you do have at least an awakened, myth awakened HP armor on, uh, on May, she would be able to survive longer. <laughs> Even though her damage may be a little nerfed, you know, but at this point, my May has died, and I'm but I'm very sure she could have just co continued killing off Shadow of Ambition completely. Yeah. So unfortunately, I 
pretty much have to quit here because there's nothing much I can do. And uh, it's a pity I couldn't finish the boss. Right here, we're gonna check out Castle Rush. So some people have told me about Castle Rush and try to try areas out here. Um, you'll see that above there's a score of 506,000. That's actually my first run. And that's a really pathetic score with Aries. <laughs> the main reason for that was because, as I said, my Mei was on regular Ravel Shrine HP armor. So she had no HP shields, which means when the fixed damage came in, um, she died. <laughs> she died really fast after a while. And another reason was because my first round was extremely terrible whereby I had to wait an entire minute before Rook actually got rid of his shields which means by the time he cast his shield and I was ready to get rid of the shield um, Rook actually had his awakened skill ready Chancellor had the awakened skill ready so if you can kill both of them off before they use their awakened skill I think you know using regular revolutionary armor can still work um, but the thing is uh, yeah I was really unfortunate in that first round so here, as we said previously, we were using Reginlave and we can easily hit the 5 million score or even some people have went up to 9 million per run. Um, so I just want to evaluate Aries here. Firstly, she is not extremely bulky. This is an extremely, extremely long battle. So the thing is, she'll get targeted constantly and maybe it's Jave. Jave is extremely strong as well and I haven't been cleansing the defense decrease so that could be a major reason why my team is going down so fast or rather my Aries is going down so fast but um, yeah so the thing is Aries being constantly targeted for a full 10 minutes uh, not exactly the most fun situation and her life skill is really bad because you can't do too much damage to the Castle Rush uh, Knight themselves right so her life skill in turn will be very bad and she cannot sustain herself in this battle at all and she's not on HP armor so um, yeah that's a problem so even though your Mei gets a lot of skills, I mean, it's also very inconsistent because the block rate for the knights are actually pretty high and there are some cases whereby they, you just, they just completely block your damage and uh, you just can't do much really. So I would still say Reginlave is very useful here and there are people that use Dire, Live Streamer School and all these heroes that, you know, are really more for Castle Rush than Aries because in, in Castle Rush I feel that there are other buffs that come in more handy and the more important than just having skill cooldown okay there are a lot of other more important effects that you need on the team uh, skill cooldown is probably one of the least things and here she dies skill cooldown is probably one of the least things needed in Castle Rush because it is such a long battle and um, you know, there are a lot of skills you can do as well. At this point, we are just gonna see how far we can go without the cooldown. You can see that May's cooldown is actually a little fast, pretty fast. In this case, I think I gave her I gave her PvE skill cooldown, so that's why it's very fast. You can go for increased awakening gauge with Aries. Maybe yeah, that's a better setup because the reason why I'm giving her PvE skill cooldown. It's because of the stamp as well. I don't have a identical stamp to replace that duo. So unfortunately I have to stick with that. Uh, but I'll probably be working on that. <laughs> yeah, so that's the block. The damage is honestly bad. And a maze very close to dying. And again, as I said, since this is such a long battle and if you don't have heals, uh, you could be in a, a very dangerous situation and yeah, like now. So my Mei has died and there's nothing more I can do. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this video helped in shedding light on where Aries can be used and her utility in different PvE modes. Uh, I think right now she is still a very decent support. Not really OP god tier PvE support but definitely good in certain situations only whereby in other situations you will want to use other heroes with better buffs and better passives. So let me know what you think about Aries. Of course remember to check out the dual raid video as well for 
her most important and key use there. Big shout out to my channel members, EMD Phoenix and the Mocha Cafe for the support. Thank you so much and see you.